Go ahead and type one in chat if you guys have seen ContraPoint's video on canceling. I promise you, this isn't going to be like a rant about woke scolds or anything. That's not what this is going to be. Okay, we got a, we got a lot of ones. Hey, Vermin is here. Nice. So a lot of ones. Obviously, everyone's seen it. It's ContraPoint. Let's be real here. There is a point in her video where she says that it's almost impossible to tell the difference between an anime furry socialist on Twitter and a Nazi pretending to be one on Twitter. She, she said this, and a lot of people uh, got really upset about this and were like, ugh, ContraPoints comparing trans people to Nazis? How, how could you do this? How could she do... What a fucking closeted Nazi. And I, we're not going to talk about that. This isn't going to be a rant about woke scolds. That's not what I want this video to be about because it's about something I think is t tangentially related but still not that, that isn't what this needs to be instead this is going to be about the right attempting to infiltrate the left to make it look bad because as it turns out i have evidence to support that this is actually something that is happening like genuinely an issue that is taking place so i uploaded a video today um i apologize that my chat from the video and the chat on screen are kind of uh, molding together um, letting your kid transition is not child abuse, and here's why. I'm going to, I think this might be sort of a, uh, um, a hot take, but I feel like this video is pretty pro-trans rights. I don't know if you guys would agree, but I feel like this video is pretty pro-trans rights. So in this video, I basically talked about how um, any reactionary who claims that it is child abuse to put your kid on hormone blockers or to allow them to transition, taking hormones or anything, or socially transition, anything like that, it is, it is not child abuse. And there's data and there's science to support this claim. It is not child abuse. It is completely okay. And yes, I like my own videos, um, and you should be too. Um, and, and that's all well and good. People obviously pretty supportive of it, obviously, you know. But I got a comment on this video that really stood out to me by someone named Mary uh, Inda. I'm going to go ahead and, and make chat disappear for a moment so that we can see these comments because I, I really want to show them, okay? Let's take a look at this. This guy is a CIA shill. He is no friend of the trans community. He gaslights people and accuses them of saying things they did not say. Okay, so my first reaction to this was like, all right, maybe they're trolling, maybe it's like a, uh, maybe they're kind of a woke scold type, I, I don't know. But then I scrolled down and I saw the argument that unfolded below. Obviously, there is no argument to support me being a CIA show, but still, you know. This person responds, please tell me this is a meme. They say, no, it's not. Okay, you're just a fuckwit, got it. Sure, if you think this, then you must be right. Look, I'm just warning you. Your statement denies the existence of Cointel Pro. So then they start claiming that I'm like a CIA shill, like a plant trying to subvert leftism. Um, they say, this video is an agenda pushing video. The trans toddler thing is used to discredit the trans community. True, but the only agenda I'm pushing in this video is if your kid has dysphoria or your kid believes they're trans, they should be allowed to be put on hormone blockers and be allowed to transition, the data backs this up, transphobes are bad. That was my video. This white cis bro dude, okay, should be obvious, but whatever. I can name two people he is gaslit lighted. Neo Jacobin, or Neo Jacobin? No idea who this is. And Phoenix Rising 87. Phoenix Rising 87 made an extremely dishonest video on me that I absolutely tore apart on stream. And I believe they, like, walked it back or something, or they, or they like, privated their video after I covered it? I'm not sure. I might be thinking of someone else. But yeah, they made a really bad video. I covered it. Um, I reached out and said, want to debate about it on stream? Join my Discord, and we can chat about it live tonight at around 8 p.m. EST. And they responded, I don't trust you. I came to warn others here. Nothing else. Go on. Gaslight an anarchist that does real work. I don't have the time. If you were so great, how come you didn't do anything for the homeless trans teens here in Arizona? Because you are fake. 
Pig Puncher was a better name, too. The police are part of the state class power structure. The problem is class division, Mr. Sis Gatekeeper. There will be no debate. You make money off leftism, yet you don't fight for the poor. Socialism is held back by bread tube. No war but class war. Even cis and trans as concepts are but flags and borders. But I guess this is beyond you. You did not even stand up for contra points when she expressed gender questioning... I assume behavior, which is highly common among the gender fluid. This word police shit is Cointel Pro. This cancel culture is Cointel Pro. You know nothing. You are just edgy gaming middle class white boy SJW bullshit. You could never handle anarchists like my family. <clears throat> now, what the fuck is Cointel Pro? Cointel Pro was basically um, a an FBI psyop, essentially, that was used to make the Black Panther Party and a lot of like leftist movements in in America look bad. And they would like perf act out. Perf they would pretend to be part of those movements and then act out in performative uh, acts of like um, uh, embarrassing acts or violent acts and whatnot to make those movements look bad. Um, so me from a few months ago may not have known better. I might have accused this person of being like a genuine person on the left who's maybe a bit like misled and they're like a woke scold or something. I don't believe that. I don't believe that this is uh, like this person is on the left. I am very sure that this is a Nazi pretending to be a leftist that is con concerned trolling right now. Um, no leftist who is aware of Cointel Pro and of like any of these issues would make these uh, uh, arguments or would make these would talk about any of this. Um, this has to be concern trolling. I refuse to believe that any leftist is actually, like, doing this. Now, why do I believe that? Why do I believe that there is any basis to go off of that this person is, uh... Also, yeah, I'm just as poor. I'm more poor than the average fuck. I just ate, I know I use this as an example a lot, but I can't afford hot dog buns, okay? When I make a hot dog or I make a bagel, I just toast slices of white bread and, and cover it in cream cheese or put a hot dog on it with, with ketchup, and, and that's what I eat. I don't make a shit ton of money, okay? But that's irrelevant to this discussion. Instead, I want to go over an example of an incontrovertible example of a Nazi pretending to be a leftist and concern trolling. They're doing this. Don't ask why I'm using the Tor browser to show Twitter right now. It has something to do with my unfortunate run-ins on Twitter. But let's go over this. So this is from back in, like, back in Valentine's Day, back in February 14th, Gudian tweeted, I just realized I have my dead name and photos on my passport and ID. I'm going to get killed when I travel to San Diego this year, aren't I? Um, you know, a good tweet, um, talking about an issue that trans people oftentimes face, uh, unfortunate, but it's, it's a reality of this world. Blooper, Blooper, thank you for the $10, says, buy some hot dog buns, you fucking he heathen. Thank you for the $10, I really appreciate it, Blooper. Um, it's very kind of you, and I and I, I love you for the donation. Thank you. Well, I love you anyway, but still. Um, so, Captain Cornflakes responds, What do you, th just randomly, out of nowhere, what do you think of Xander Hall saying Pig Puncher is a dead name? For a little context, basically, I, I've joked that when people call me Pig Puncher, they're dead naming me. It's not serious. It doesn't actually affect me in any way. I'm obviously not trying to equate them in any way. Dead naming is obviously way more harmful like actual dead naming, like when you dead name a trans person is obviously way more harmful in every single metric than like calling me pig puncher. I, I don't think that anyone hearing me joke about that could possibly um, in good faith believe that I'm saying or comparing that to dead naming. But regardless, she responds kind of dumb, but whatever. I got bigger problems. Captain Cornflakes responds, I think it's super offensive. People deal with hardships in regards to their trans identity and he's making it into a joke. Now, this is a good argument. This is a valid argument, and if this was where the argument ended, I, I, wouldn't, have be I wouldn't have looked any more into it. I've just been like, okay, yeah, I mean, this is a, a valid argument. I'm making a joke out of an... Technically, I'm making a joke out of a real issue trans people face and dead naming, you know? Gudian responds, I ain't arguing with the fact that it's a silly way to use it or that he probably shouldn't. I'm just busy doing U.S. election stuff and... Uh, Unistat and stuff, so it's not at the top of my agenda. I, I imagine I butchered that pronounce pronunciation, but hey. Captain Cornflakes responds, Sorry trans people don't meet your attention at the moment. Not like they're being killed in, in the streets or discriminated against because of their identity, and you're not even American. Why do you care about the election? So really dumb? 
a really dumb response, but the arguments, I feel, are still logical. Trans people are killed and discriminated against for their identity. However, saying you're not American, why do you care about the election? Kind of a dumb argument. Okay. You know I'm trans, right, you fucking idiot? And the election matters because it will directly affect the health of trans people and all people in the U.S., also the livelihoods of everyone around the world from the impact. Stop and think for a second. Okay, then they respond. Did you really make the I'm trans so I can't be transphobic um, argument? I'm genuinely disgusted, and way to go using ableist language. At this point, it should be clear to anybody reading this that this is a bad faith argument that this captain cornflakes person is in bad faith but why do i believe that this person is like an alt writer trying to influence the left buckle your seatbelts because this gets from here it gets even better the trans part is because i am fully aware that we trans people are being discriminated against by society and attacked i've done charity streams and videos discussing this also as far as i'm concerned idiot or moron serve a function beyond the historical usage also we're not going to read this tweet here because, uh, well, we will. Like, I'm fully aware that you are conso- concerned trolling right now. You literally follow the fucking Nazi flamenco. So give me one re- good reason to give a shit what you think before I mute you. Now, ignore this tweet. Because it get- if you ignore this tweet and the call out here, it gets better. Because these things that-, that she just said are true. This person is actually a Nazi pretending to be a lefty on Twitter. But they respond, I will be unfollowing you, Gudian. You're not the ally I thought you from a... I thought, you, from allowing transphobia in your community to now using ableist language, you seem to be becoming a reactionary, and I'll have no part in it. So this person is a Nazi, obviously, Gudian pointed out, they follow Flamenco and retweet, like, Nazi shit. They're just a Nazi pretending to be a lefty and harassing bread tubers and concern trolling. Um, and this was their response. But, let's go a little bit further, because, let's just go a little bit further. Gudian then tweeted a screenshot of this interaction and said, what is the point of asking me this publicly and tagging them if not to cause Twitter drama? If I have a problem with Xander Hall, I'll take it up with them myself. Please stop doing this to people. It's just, it just uh, uh, forments mistrust and anxiety. So, yeah, good tweet. Obviously, the intention here of this undercover Nazi was to start a fight between me and Gudian. Um, there is no other way you could interpret this. Um, this is clearly an alt writer going undercover, trying to sow discourse in the bread tube community because they know that um, uh, uh, if there is, when, if bread tube is less united, then it is less capable of taking on the alt-right and, and reactionary rhetoric online in general, this is obviously. If you scroll down, obviously me talking, a lot of people debunking this shit, Captain Corf- Cornflakes responds saying, I'm literally having a panic attack right now because you're putting me on blast in front of everyone. Thanks for triggering my anxiety and PTSD. Let's go to this person's account. We're, this is, I have right here, open another tab, this person's Twitter account. What do you think we're going to see when we look at this person's Twitter account? Buckle your seatbelts, buckaroos. First thing we see is a retweet. A third of Poland has now been declared an anti-LGBT free zone, making intolerance official. Based Poland retweeted. Interesting. Retweeting a post saying make sex work shameful, uh, shameful again. Interesting. Making a a retweet from what appears to be a legit skinhead. Is this guy like an actual skinhead or something? What the fuck? Crystal Philosopher. What's this guy's... What's this guy's shtick? Oh god, it's taking forever. Never mind. But like, let's look at this guy's follows, actually. Let's look at this guy's follows. Nick Fuentes. Hmm... Caitlin Bennett, uh, Anarcho Tax, surprisingly. Uh, who else? Who else are they following? A lot of bread tubers. Interesting. You know, so they can fucking harass them, I assume. If you're looking at the, the previous tweets here, Andy Worski. Nice, nice. Of course, following Vosh. Uh, Flamenco, of course. Um, the guy that's fucking obsessed with me, and Ethan Ralph. So, this person is very clearly and i think we can all admit this and i I think i've gone 
far enough to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt, a Nazi pretending to be a leftist that is con- concerned trolling and trying to sow discourse among leftist communities to get to cause infighting and to thus, I guess, extensively um, hinder the productivity of the left in general. So previously, I would have believed these people were real, and I would have been like, "Oh, they're they're oh yeah, he also follows Mr. Medicare, yeah." So previously, I would have been like, "Oh, it's a it's a woke scold," uh, and then bitched about woke scolds for a while, and I and I I would do that, you know, fuck woke scolds, they're, they're fucking. I I feel like at this point, bread tube has kind of united at this point um, against woke scolds since what happened to Peter Coffin. I remember the days when it was just me and Vosh that would rail on these people because we were the only ones getting shit from them, except for kind of contra points. But more recently, with Peter Coffin kind of snapping and going after them. After the woke scolds, I should say, it seems like it's more acceptable now in, in like mainstream leftist discourse uh, to like shit on them. But I'm not going to be doing that here. Um, this is actually concerning because if you go to ContraPoint's Twitter right now, I apologize for all the noise in my background. My roommates love to specifically do the dishes or make a lot of noise whenever I stream. If we go to ContraPoint's Twitter right now. And we look at her pinned tweet where she talks about how she's done with Twitter. And you look and you see the people saying, okay, boomer, or um, there was a bunch of them that, uh, that were like really mean, but thankfully they've, uh, thankfully they've, oh yeah, here's another one. The, uh, the contra cycle, do something terrible for attention, get called out for it, take two weeks off Twitter to pretend to be the victim, come back and issue a non-apology. These kind of tweets, you know, the, um, the, uh, uh, you know, the ones making fun of her, the ones saying, uh, um, later, sweetie, where was those? There was a lot of them that were like, um, that were like uh, uh, later, sweetie, and stuff like that. How many of the mean tweets here, se- like sending off contra points here, glad that she was going off Twitter? How many of them were actual lefties, and how many of them were just Nazis with throwaway sock accounts who were just shitting on here, shitting on her, and 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 celebrating her being uh, deplatforming herself essentially. And that makes me wonder, how many of the woke scolds are actually woke scolds? Do the left actually have a woke scold problem? Or are they just Nazis? And I imagine that some of them exist. You know, people who are maybe pretty young or maybe um, have de- dealt with a lot of uh, abuse, I think. I-, I think this is very common. Um, everyone that I've met and talked to that has experience with abusers knows that the abusers were typically abused early on in life. That doesn't mean everyone who's abused will become an abuser, obviously. But one of the biggest things is the um, is the tendency for when an abuser is called out to lash out once they're called out for being an abuser. They play the victim immediately. They're the quickest to play the victim when it happens. So I think those people exist, but I'm going to take the stance now that most of the woke scold types that we're seeing on Twitter and whatnot are actually alt writers with with sock accounts that are pretending to be lefties. Obviously, they exist, but I I feel like a lot of them are Nazis. So what I would implore you to do is keep an eye out. If somebody comes into your comments or into your into your tweets and it seems like they're concerned trolling, go ahead and look at their follow list or their their retweet history. A lot of them are smart enough not to follow Nick Fuentes on their sock accounts where they, that they troll on, but some of them aren't that smart, like the Captain Cornflakes person we just covered. And I'd like to hear from you guys. Do you think this person calling me a Cointel Pro, like, C, by the way, it's, the FBI is what did Cointel Pro, not the CIA. The CIA, is, the CIA are the ones that destabilized uh, uh, socialist governments in, in South America. But still, you know, the, the point still stands, I suppose. Do you, do you think this person is legit or do you think they're a Nazi? Because I've already checked. I went to their channel and I, I tried to see if they, um, I tried to see who they follow. Uh, they have everything privated. Um, they have like this and it says, I've decided to comment on various channels to the fake, to the fakes. 
I also think I will give good shout give shout outs to the ones who are real. Nothing significant here. They did join literally six days ago, um, which is another part of it. Uh, as you can see, account made six days ago. Gonna go ahead and say this is a Nazi concern, concern trolling, trying to sow discourse than the left. All I'm saying, the reason why I want to make this video specifically is because alt writers are no stranger to psyops and trolling campaigns and and things like that. I would not put it past them for it to be some sort of maybe not organized, but still existent movement on the right to try to make the left look bad by going undercover and, and, and performing and, and engaging in this like really performative, cringy shit, trying to sow discourse. Just keep an eye out. Don't fall for it. Don't engage. Don't start fighting with fellow lefties and be spurred on by people like this. It's their goal. The Nazis that are doing this, it's their goal. They tried to start a fight between me and Gudian. Don't fall for it. Be vigilant, comrades.